Hey guys, hope you're doing well. We are going to talk about something interesting today. And this is really something that's directly um, relevant to the majority of the people that I work with. Because most of the people that I work with have thyroid dysfunction. Many of them have thyroid autoimmunity or they're autoimmune. Okay, so one of the things that I really want to share with you guys is some information that I came across on a toxic chemical that could lead to T3 autoimmunity. Okay, now T3, in case you're not aware, is your most active thyroid hormone. So your thyroid primarily makes T4 and T3, and T3 is the one that's most physiologically active. It stimulates your, your body and promotes all of the, the benefits that you get from your thyroid hormone. So there's a toxic chemical that has been shown to promote autoimmunity against your own hormone. Isn't that unbelievable? Autoimmunity against your own hormone. So I really wanted to share this with you guys because as you know, today we're going to be having a webinar at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And you can go to nomoretoxicbody.com and you can register there if you haven't already registered. But it's going to be at 9 p.m. And I'm going to be talking a lot about the toxins in our environment, which if you watched any of the live streams that I've been talking about lately, you're gonna, you, you'll see that I've been covering this extensively because I've come across so much information. And there's a ton of information that I'm not going to be able to share with you guys now even, or even on the webinar. It just would take hours to go through and really share with you a lot of the problems that we're finding. And a lot of the, what I'm really trying to teach you guys is that we are being, um, basically we're just being poisoned by these chemicals in our environment. And they have so many effects that it's very difficult to determine what's causing us to be sick. So you have to address these toxins or you're going to be faced with, you're more likely to be faced with a lot of the problems that we see associated with them. And for example, so here's one more layer to the, to the, to the mix of issues. So we know that with all the thyroid problems that, we, that we're aware of, right, all the ways that the thyroid physiology can break down, which there are at least 24, at least. Now with chemicals, when you add chemicals to that, there are probably at least another 24 ways that the thyroid physiology can break down because literally almost every step of the process, if not even more, more ways uh, can be uh, disrupted by environmental chemicals. So we're going to talk about one today that can actually cause your immune system to start attacking and destroying your thyroid hormone. This is an important one. Okay, and this is one that's in everything. So, what is it? It's three letters. It ends with an A. It's an environmental chemical that can be found on thermal receipt paper. Do any of you guys know what it is? It can be found on paper, like receipts. I've talked about this before. It's a coating in food beverage cans. So it's like a nonstick coating on the inside of cans a lot of times. It's found in food and drink packaging. Water bottles, so plastic water bottles, it's, it's, um, it's, uh, it's very extensively and heavily found there. Infant bottles. So it's also found in some dental sealants and even composites. So a lot of you are probably getting amalgams removed, right? The, mercury containing fillings and you're going to get composites. Well guess what? My mouth is full of composites too so there's only so much we can do, right? But the fact is is that we want to be made as aware of this stuff as possible so that we can make better decisions, right? And so also we can learn um, about the potential issues. So if you're suffering with any of these problems with thyroid dysfunction, with we're going to talk about diabetes and some other issues, then this could be a potential issue for you. And so what we want to do is we want to minimize, minimize our exposure. We want to detoxify our body the right way and be aware of what we need to do long term to be as healthy as possible. But can you imagine, this stuff is found not only in, um, in these things, many, many, many other things, guys. And there's um, epoxies and finishes and varnishes, um, but infant water bottles, you know, all these things that you just never think of. Listen, guys, if it's not natural and it doesn't come from the earth, it very easily can be causing you a problem. Okay, I'm just going to tell you. And even if it does come from the earth, there are problems there. But there's much, you're much more likely to be facing and, uh, and creating new problems for yourself if you're utilizing something that's man-made. It's just how it is, especially if it comes from petroleum-based products, plastics and things like that especially. 
So what's the chemical? Does anyone know? Anyone know? Put it in the comments if you know what the chemical is. It's also associated with cardiovascular disease. So what's the number one leading cause of death in the United States? Cardiovascular disease, heart disease. This chemical has been associated with cardiovascular disease. What about, um, what's one of the, the, the primary reasons and the main reasons that people are getting cancer and are sick, chronically sick today? Diabetes. Well, guess what? This chemical is associated with diabetes. Blood sugar is, is not the only issue with diabetes. That is a huge um, misconception that it's blood sugar, it's, it's diet and, um, and exercise. And that's how you address diabetes. Completely, that's a complete misconception. There are multiple factors that contribute to this. Uh, you know, I see diabetics so frequently, and it's such and it's such a big issue with people that are you know my direct relatives that I'm actually considering doing you know creating a diabetes program just for people that have diabetes because we see when we work with people that you know come in with autoimmune thyroid issues. When we work with, with them, people that have diabetes, when they listen to what we do and they get the testing to help us uncover inflammatory levels, cortisol, and they follow the dietary recommendations we give them, it's not uncommon at all to see type 2 diabetes reversed. Not at all. And so the thing is, is that you know, I'm considering actually focusing and trying to teach people that just have type 2 diabetes how to be healthy. That's one thing. Um, because really, the approach that I take with people is one that it doesn't really, I mean, there, there are slightly different things that we can do, but it, it's, if you're having, a, if you have a chronic disease process, what we're doing is looking at how to get the body as healthy as possible. It's not really addressing a disease process. It's really what's going on with your body, what's in the way of the body's ability to work optimally. Let's get that out of the way so the body can, can flourish and thrive. And if there's a particular disease process that's occurring or something like diabetes, then you know that there are, there are some things that are more likely to be contributing to that. But the overall approach is optimizing just body, the, the health of the body. So diabetes is actually contributed to by this chemical. What else? Lots of other problems. Um, the interesting thing, too, is this chemical. Does anyone know what it is? Put it in the comments. This chemical, three letters. It's an acronym for it. Um, three letters for the, for the actual chemical name. It's also a xenoestrogen. Xenoestrogen. It means that... It, it is a, xenoestrogens are environmental compounds that in our bodies look like estrogen. They're, they're estrogen mimicking compounds. They will actually bind and stimulate the estrogenic receptors of our cells of our body. Our body can't differentiate it from estrogen. Do you think that's a problem? It is a major problem. With the explosion in cancers and estrogen sensitive cancers, all these, these problems, these xenoestrogens are, are being looked at as contributing to and being a, playing a much bigger role in some of these processes. So it's a xenoestrogen. One of the things that, the, that it does is it works against T3 action. So it, not only can it contribute to the autoimmunity where the immune system attacks and destroys T3, but it contributes and it can work against T3 action. So it, it's, a, it's an antagonist. It, it decreases the body's ability to be able to utilize T3. So it does two different, it has two different effects on T3. It can mimic estrogen. <laughs> It contributes to all of these other problems. It's found everywhere. And if that's not enough, it may be neurotoxic and promote neurodegenerative disorders. Like neurotoxic, neurotoxic means that nerve cells, nerve cells are poisoned by it. That means your brain, that means your ner your, the nerves in your body. That's why I said brain here. Neuro, neurodegenerative disorders. It's implicated in neurodegenerative disorders. What are those? Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, dementia. Guys, if you don't understand that we are being poisoned by the chemicals in our environment, I, don't, I, I can't tell you enough that this is not understood by our, by our medical community. Not well enough. I mean, some people are aware of it. People know it's not good, but they don't, we don't know the scale of it. And the problem is because why? One of the reasons is because it's very difficult to test for it. Um, it is, um, and then what do you do about it, right? Well, that's what we're going to talk about on our seminar, on our on our webinar uh, tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern, um, 9, 9 p.m. If I see if I say 8 p.m. one more time, it's it's 9 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> I've written it, I wrote it incorrectly today. I did a lot of different things. It's 9 p.m. Eastern. 
Um, you guys will receive an email for one thing. Like, um, if you, you need to go, you can go to nomoretoxicbody.com and register, and you should receive a series of emails um, that will take you to the, the webinar broadcast room. What we're going to do is people that have registered, we're going to send out an email with a link to the broadcast room prior to the webinar, about 15 minutes prior to the webinar, maybe an hour earlier. And then at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, it's going to start. Now, if you have, what we're going to do is we're going to try to make a replay available, okay, so that you're going to be able to have access to the, to the recorded version of it. And we're going to have that, that will probably be available through, um, say, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Okay, they'll, they'll keep it up for us until, until then. And then it'll be gone, but you guys can go to nomoretoxicbody.com and you can register. And you're going to learn a lot more about like what these problems are, what, what we can do about it, different types of testing that's like cutting edge. And if you didn't see my live stream last night, I talked about <clears throat> visual testing and how that's, um, that's shown to be a very good way to help us assess uh, toxicity, especially brain uh, neurological exposure to some of these metals and some of these chemicals. So I, it's, there's, we're going to talk about three different forms of testing, and I'm going to actually give you guys an opportunity to get access to that if you want it. So there's a lot of stuff that we're going to talk about. But So what is this chemical? Does anyone know? Have you put it in the comments for me? Because I can't see. Hopefully some of you guys have figured, figured this out, especially when we're talking about thermal receipt paper, because I've talked about this and how receipts have... You know what it is now? B blank A. What is it, guys? BPA. Bisphenol A. BPA. Plastics, thermal receipt paper, coating in food, beverage cans, food and drink um, packaging, baby bottles. You know, every, everybody sees, um, and this is really important that we talk about this too. Everyone will look, at, especially if you have children or grandchildren, and you know someone is telling you, hey, don't buy this stuff with BPA. Get BPA-free everything, right? Well, so guess what? <laughs> guess what we're finding out? We're finding out that the BPA, the bisphenol A, that can create all these problems and more that we're trying to eliminate from the plastic bottles and, and everything else that, that we use, that babies use, BPA-free uh, passies. Guess what? It's just another form of BPA that they're, that they're changing these bottles too, that, that guess what, may actually be worse. That's right, we don't, we don't know yet, but it's still plastic, guys. This is the main thing. Plastic is plastic. Plastic is plastic, it doesn't matter. If you want to reduce your exposure to chemicals and toxic chemicals in plastic, don't use plastic at all. Doesn't matter if it's BPA free or what it's called, plastic is plastic, and that's really BPA is used so much. Um, water supply pipes. Can you believe that? The pipes they're bringing water to you may actually be lined with BPA. How, how great does that make you feel? You know, we have to become aware of these problems so that we can make as many changes possible for ourselves and our families so that we can detoxify these things from our bodies, so that we can, we can be empowered to try to live the healthiest life possible. That's what I'm going to be teaching you guys more about. But I hope that this information on BPA has helped you guys to understand directly how this can directly affect the thyroid hormone physiology. Guys, there, I could talk probably every day for the next several months on topics that are chemicals as they relate to the thyroid and as they relate to autoimmunity, probably longer than that, um, on different research papers. The bottom line is, is that chemicals are everywhere, they're disrupting our physiology, and they're doing it in ways that, unless you're really focusing on trying to understand the connections between these chemicals and our thyroid hormone physiology, your doctors are going to be completely you know, I don't want to use a, I don't mean this in any derogatory sense because, you know, my mission is to try to help you guys be more empowered, to help you be better health advocates for yourself and work better with your doctors. And your doctors are trying to help you, but they're going to literally be oblivious to this stuff. They're going to have no clue about it because I learn about it through continuing education that's specific to this kind of, this kind of information, these chemicals. And then I'm looking in the scientific literature trying to better understand the impact these chemicals are having. Not many people are doing that. So that's why the stuff that I'm going to be talking to you guys about, your doctors may not understand that or may not believe it, um, especially you know, when it's in the context of you're, you're talking to them and introducing this information to them on a visit with them where they've got a few minutes to spend with you and you're dumping this information and they're like, hey, where'd you hear about this? Online. And they're like, oh, okay. So you learned about it from an online guy, right? So an, an, an online doctor. I got it. And that's not necessarily the best attitude. Um, I don't 
condone that attitude, but the fact is, is that they're trying to help you. This information is not going to be stuff that they're familiar with. And how it impacts the, your thyroid hormone physiology is not something they're going to be familiar with. And even if they were, they probably don't know at all how to approach it or what to do with you. And they don't have time to cover it. So that's why you have to, you know, you really have to um, be educated by someone like me that's looking into this stuff in more detail. So I hope that this helps you guys. Hey guys, Dr. Shook, thank you for viewing our videos. I hope they help you out. If you want to, just subscribe to our channel somewhere here. You can watch a video um, that YouTube's actually selected for you, so hopefully it'll help you out. If you need any other information or resources, just look in the description. We've got links to our website, to our nine lab test guidebook, and everything else that we do. I really appreciate you, and I hope you guys have a great day.